what's up guys welcome back to life on the wrist we recently started a series where we discussed legends within the watchmaking industry these are i really want to pay attention to the people who really were innovative in um, the art of watchmaking and the last video i made was on abraham louis breguet um, if you haven't seen that video um, be sure to check it out on our channel it was actually released last friday today is monday so it was the last video we released go check it out if you're interested in that video um, but today we're going to be continuing that series <clears throat> and talking about Jean-Marc Vacheron. Um, Vacheron Constantin is actually one of my favorite brands, period. It's one of my favorite Holy Trinity brands. I really like the fact that they have so many years of uninterrupted history. I love a lot of their classical styles uh, and it's obviously a, a watch brand that's very uh, near and dear to my heart. So um, I thought I would talk about the founder, Jean-Marc Vacheron, um, in this episode of Legends of Watchmaking. Um, but before we get into that, if you haven't already, be sure to smash that like button. It really does help us out. Um, and if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to our channel if you like videos about watches. So for those of you who do not know, Jean-Marc Vacheron is a Swiss horologist um, who founded Vacheron Constantin, as I mentioned previously. He was born in 1731 on April the 29th in Geneva, Switzerland, which is obviously basically a bedrock for a lot of the um, Swiss watchmakers. Um, everyone really comes from Geneva. Geneva is basically the center of watchmaking. We have another series where we talk about places to travel when, um, if you're interested in watches, and our first episode was about Geneva, so be sure to check that video out. Um, but Geneva really was the uh, the bedrock and where a lot of uh, Swiss horologists came from. Um, this um, this was a, a time where we started getting into the Age of Enlightenment, which was obviously a time where people started to um, kind of uh, use reason and um, logic to create their systems of ethics and discuss ways in which government, ethics, religion, and, and basically basic thought was um, kind of brought about. So um, uh, Jean-Marc Vacheron was very involved in this time period. Um, he studied watchmaking and eventually signed his first apprentice on September 17th, 1725, 1755, at the age of 24. Um, this kind of marked the founding of his company as he was then the um, master watchmaker and he was teaching an apprentice. I couldn't actually find who the apprentice was. If you do know who his apprentice was, uh, be sure to leave in the comment section so everyone can learn about um, that. But that was really the founding of um, his company. Um, and in 1755, the same year that he signed his apprentice, he created his first watch that he signed, J.C. Vacheron. This was a um, silver pocket watch, which was um, very, very simple time only um, pocket watch. And if you looked at the movement, the movement um, the, along the outer edge of the base plate, you could see his signature. Um, the escapement was actually made out of gold. It's very, very, I, it's a very common thing for that time period. So in 1755, that was the first watch that was produced by one could say Vacheron Constantin, but it was only signed Jean-Claude Vacheron. Um, as I mentioned previously, this was during the Age of Enlightenment, and um, Jean, Jean-Marc was actually very involved in this time. Um, this was a time that um, humans began to kind of question and, and use logic and reason to kind of um, create their opinions about the world, create systems that were used in government and religion and ethics. And Jean-Marc was actually very close with Jean-Jacques Rousseau, who was a Genevan philosopher, who was kind of at the forefront of the Enlightenment theory with people like, um, I believe his name is John Locke, of those types of individuals. But Vacheron actually engaged in a lot of debates and cafe talks in Geneva with um, Jean-Jacques Rousseau. And um, ironically, uh, in Rousseau's uh, books, he's actually spoke about the importance and the um, the importance and the benefits that hand craftsmanship can bring to society, which is actually, I think, a little bit of a homage and a kind of a, a, a hat tip to what Jean-Marc Vacheron was doing and a lot of the cabinetiers were doing in Geneva. Um, so in 1755, uh, he obviously, uh, Jean-Marc Jean Vacheron was um, at 24 years, old, 24 years old and he was actually considered one of the cabinetiers uh, watchmakers, which were actually a group of um, watchmakers who created components that went into watches and then eventually sold them to to watchmakers who brought the uh, pieces together to make um, 
to make their watches. Um, along with being a cabinetier where he was making the components, he was also making watches at the same time. Um, if you um, kind of fast forward a bunch of years, uh, Jean-Marc Vacheron actually had five sons. Um, one of his sons, Abraham Vacheron, took over the company in 1785 and kind of continued the business during the years of the French Revolution. Ironically, the Age of Enlightenment kind of grew into uh, the French Revolution and that was one of the major players in what created the, the movement that was the French Revolution by those, um, by the mass, uh, by the mass um, group of uh, individuals in France. And this was a tough time for Jean-Marc Vacheron, especially because people were not, you know, purchasing luxury goods as much. So um, when Abraham Vacheron kind of took over, it was, a, it was a tough time to navigate, but um, he ended up navigating the waters and Vacheron Constantin had that continuous history that it, that it talks about um, frequently today. Um, that's obviously a little bit further in, in the future of his life, but um, some of the things that occurred between um, the age of 24 and um, the time that his son took over the business was in 1770, he actually made the first complication in a timepiece. This was actually a a uh, small wall clock that had the day of the week and the date of the month um, on the actual dial as well as the time. So a very big uh, leap forward for Vacheron, for uh, Jean-Marc Vacheron, but also for watchmaking in general. It was very rare to have a day and a date on a, um, a timepiece, a wall clock, a watch, anything. So this was a very big uh, step forward for uh, Jean-Marc as a watchmaker, but also watches in general. Also in 1779, um, Jean-Marc uh, was the first to create the engine turn dial. This is actually a dial finishing. You see a lot of this type of finishing on watches from uh, Breguet. And um, one of the reasons is because this was, you know, Abraham Louis Breguet from, who was the founder of Breguet and Jean-Marc Vacheron were kind of around at the same time. So they probably shared these types of um, techniques, but um, uh, Jean-Marc Vacheron created the first engine turn dials which really grew into a, a, a way of finishing that a lot of watch companies ended up adopting. Um, unfortunately, in 1805, uh, Jean-Marc passed away um, and his sons kind of continued um, on with Vacheron, with the name Vacheron. Um, I believe uh, later, um, I believe it was Jean-Marc's grandson who ended up uh, meeting uh, a watchmaker with the last name of Constantin and formed the Vacheron Constantin. Uh, I think what, what I'm excited about is I think I want to actually do a whole video kind of tracing the history of Vacheron Constantin because it's a very interesting brand with a very interesting history. There, the, What sucked is this video, I really wanted to focus on Jean-Marc Vacheron, um, but there are so many interesting things that happened with the brand Vacheron Constantin, um, but Jean-Marc really was the start of um, an absolutely wonderful watch company that really focuses on hand craftsmanship and is part of the Holy Trinity and is a brand very near to my heart. So thank you Jean-Marc Vacheron for everything that you did for the watch industry. Um, we continue to enjoy uh, complications on timepieces, engine turn dials, but also the brand of Vacheron Constantin. And we have a lot of respect, at least I do, for the cabinetier of um, this time period. So thank you very much Jean-Marc. Um, so if you enjoyed this video, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Um, I know that we have got some requests for watchmakers to go over, so be sure to be on the lookout for our episode 3 of Legends of Watchmaking. Um, we've now done, as a reminder, Jean-Marc Vacheron was this video. We also did Abraham Louis Breguet, so who knows what our next video would be. If you look at the comments on some of on episode 1, you'll probably figure out who our next person will be. Um, so um, stay tuned for that. Um, if you are new to the channel and you've made it this far, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We make videos about watches. Um, if you have a topic that you have in mind, be sure to leave that in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, and I said every single video, be sure to smash that like button. It really does help us out. I really am enjoying making videos like this because um, this is kind of the history of our passion, our hobby. And Jean-Marc will always, if you wear a Vacheron Constantin or you see a Vacheron Constantin, you have to remember at the soul of that piece is Jean-Marc who really founded this amazing company. The same thing with uh, Breguet watches. Abraham Louis is within that watch. So um, it's a very interesting time and I think it's actually very interesting kind of the connection between watchmaking but also the political movements that happened 
um, or perhaps like this one age of enlightenment it's cool to kind of draw that history together because things don't happen in silos so it was very interesting um, to see that and with that said guys i hope you enjoyed this video and until next time